Am I the a-hole for telling my husband's female friend he might be your best friend but you're not his? Long story short, my husband has one of those female friends. I'll call her Sarah. Her and I get along fine, but every once in a while she'll make a comment or sit a little too close or touch him a lot, or compete with me on how close they are, or how well she knows him. She's one in a big group of about 11 friends. I've talked to my husband about her several times, but it's so many added up micro actions that it's hard to tell her off for one singular thing without looking crazy. Well, this past weekend, the group of friends got together for the first time since we're now all boosted. My husband and I eloped a few weeks ago and this was the first time most were seeing us since. Sarah came right up and got in our face as the group was congratulating us, to tell my husband how disappointed she was in him for not telling her about our ceremony, not inviting her, not even sending her a photo. He told her nobody except our parents knew. Nobody was invited and we don't have our professional photos back. This girl started sobbing. How could you do this to her? That she wanted him to be her man of honor when she gets married. She's single. And he didn't even invite her to his. And their friendship now needed some serious TLC to recover. This is in front of the whole group. I couldn't take it anymore. And said, he might be your best friend, but you're not his. And this was between me and him. You're not even a consideration. There were so frosty oohs from the crowd. And she left the house. The crowd is split. They were all my husband's friends before I came into the picture and some think it wasn't called for and that I should have just let my husband handle it. I was mad in the moment, but now I don't know. Too far? Now for the top comments. Not stay home. She stepped over the line with her sobbing and demands publicly and she needs TLC? She got a whole relationship in her head that may or may not exist and your husband needs to draw that line in the sand. Yep. The TLC comments was, I think, what triggered me. The only tender thing I ask for my friend is chicken. Not today, home. I braced myself after I read one of those female friends. But now? Holy hell. Literally en route to see my best friend and his wife. No freaking way did I react that way when they eloped. Now I am as close to her as I am to him. Sounds like she pictured your husband as her fallback guy at least. Sobbing? That is deranged. Not today, home. But I'm curious as to why your husband hasn't distanced himself from someone who doesn't respect your relationship. They don't do things one and one anymore, but she's still within the main friend group, so hard not to have her around. He still needs to set boundaries. Her behavior was way out of line. She's honestly acting like your husband is either a fallback person for her or the one who got away. Crap needs to be shut down immediately, and you two need to be a united front about it. Not stay home. She was trying to make your marriage about her and her feelings. Not stay hull and I wish you could see how hard my eyes rolled reading this post. Talk about no boundaries. She's so transparently into your husband it's almost painful. While well, you definitely could have let him handle her, you weren't out of line in the least. This girl needs to know where she stands. And that's well behind you. Nicely done. Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for kicking my sister's husband out of my house because of what he did? I, female 34, lost my husband eight weeks ago. He had cancer and it got treated, then it came back. It was and still is so devastating. I'm trying to stay collected and welcoming to all the supportive family members who come to offer help, despite my constant change in mood due to grief. My sister is the most supportive one, although her husband would act inappropriately sometimes, especially after he told me after the funeral that now I'm burden-free and can live my life, given I was my husband's sole carer. I try to let go of those comments, thinking he didn't know better. He, my sister, and my family came to visit last week. They cooked dinner for me and kept me company for a bit. After dinner, my brother-in-law asked for a minute with me inside a kitchen. He started telling about a co-worker of his who's single then went on to list everything good about him. I was confused as to why he was telling me all that. He then reached out for his pound pocket and pulled a piece of paper with his co-worker's phone number on it, telling me to give him a call sometime. I was floored. I couldn't really tell if he was joking or what, but he looked serious and kept insisting I take the number. I lost it. I just started yelling at him that my husband just died, and he was out of his mind to try to hook me up with a co-worker of his. I tried to explain that it wasn't like that, and that he was just offering me something helpful, but I didn't know what he meant. I called him disrespectful, then yelled at him to get out of my house. 
My sister and the others ran into the kitchen not knowing what was going on. I told them then pressured him to leave my house, but my sister asked that I calm down but I couldn't. He left then my sister left quietly. After I'd calmed down, I sat with my family, and they said I was right and that what he did was not okay, but I needed to keep in mind that he and my sister helped so much by cooking for me, comforting me and doing so much for me in these difficult times, so I shouldn't have reacted like that and could have been a little more considerate and graceful. They said kicking him out was too much, and I should call him later and talk things out so I won't ruin my relationship with him and possibly my sister. It's been days and haven't called. And my sister hasn't visited or called, which means she's upset with me. And now I'm beginning to think they're most likely hurt because I acted ungrateful after everything they've done for me. Not stay home. Actions are not balancing each other. It doesn't work like that. It's not as if preparing meals for someone allows you to be inappropriate with them afterwards. Exaggerating here, I prepared a meal for you. And I think you are stupid, by the way. Hey, don't insult me. Well, I cooked for you, remember? Seeing elsewhere on AITA today and somewhat applies. A favor held for ransom is no favor at all. Not stay home. He was way out of line and needed to be told to back off. How cold and rude. You are grieving for your husband and you may never want to date again. It's only been eight weeks. I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm sending you my sincerest condolences. You don't owe anyone an apology. What he did was outright callous. Not day home. He was clueless and cold and totally lacked empathy. Grief makes us extremely sensible. So of course his rudeness was extra painful. This is where, if you want, there is a room to mend a relationship. If you want. You can call your sister and say that you appreciate everything they have done to support you since your husband's death. But that your brother-in-law's offer was too soon and misguided. And that in grief, your reaction was amplified. If he is willing to apologize for his lack of tact, you can apologize for the force of your reaction. You did not overreact. I think he should be the one to make the first gesture towards reconciliation. But he has proven he lacks completely in compassion and sense. So if you feel like it, this could be a way to move past this. Not stay home. I can't tell if your brother-in-law is an actual jerk or just astoundingly lacking in empathy and social judgment. But either way, his actions were wildly insensitive and inappropriate, and your actions completely understandable. Agreed. It'd be one thing if the co-worker runs a support group for widowers, but brother-in-law didn't even specify that, just said it could help. I would never think to shove a phone number into the hands of a recent widow without a really good explanation, and he gave none. My mom is a widower, and it took her four years to even contemplate dating again. She has a lot of friends who fulfill her life, so dating isn't top priority for her right now. Next story. Am I the a-hole for buying two of the same small car instead of a more practical car? My boyfriend is frustrated I didn't consider his needs. For a few years, I've had a newer Miata as my only car. I find it practical for myself. I've even traveled across country in it twice. My boyfriend doesn't find it as practical. He is six foot two and finds it small. Plus, he doesn't like to pack lights when traveling and is frustrated at only being able to bring one suitcase. Anyway, I wanted a car to take the track days that I could mod more than my daily driver. I mentioned to my boyfriend that I was shopping around for another car. I wanted something to track, but he also wasn't going to keep it street legal so he could have a second car. He doesn't have a car of his own, so sometimes things are logistically difficult. I was looking at a few options for cars and Craigslist and then spotted a great deal on a 1997 Miata. It needed some work, but that's my hobby anyway. I jumped on it because that kind of deal doesn't stick around for long, and that same afternoon I bought the car. I got to work on it over the weekend and got it repaired well enough to be drivable. And I'm planning to add a roll cage, suspension upgrades, new sway bars, and new tires. But on Sunday when my boyfriend came back from a weekend trip he was taking, he was really upset to see the car. He was incredulous and bought a second of the same car, this one even smaller. He said he was expecting something full-sized which could fit more than two people. He has a visitation every month with his kids he had with his ex and he either has to take them on the bus or during COVID have his ex drive them to him and pick them up. So he was frustrated I didn't get a five-seater car that could fit the kids along with us. 
I said I never knew expected anything but me picking a track day car, picked out primarily to race, and letting him drive whatever it was if he needed to occasionally. But it seemed like he saw me getting the second car as primarily a car for him or our household. He said he wasn't trying to act entitled, but he did expect me to at least be considerate of his situation, and not just be like, me, 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 and go buy a second car that is my favorite car but doesn't consider him at all. Am I the a-hole for buying a second Miata? Now for the comments. So, let me get this straight. You bought your car with your money, and your boyfriend who didn't pay for anything and doesn't have a car but likes the convenience of having one and being driven places by you, is mad because you didn't spend your money on a car that he wants so that he can use it to drive around his kids? Alexa, play no scrubs. Not stay home. Why doesn't he buy a car of his own to cart his kids around in? You needed another car for track day, not another daily rider. Sounds like you should ask you to help him find a fixer-upper and help him fix it up. His crappy life choices are not your responsibility. You're being kind enough to let him use your car. Does he live with you? Not stay home. He doesn't have to like your car. Not stay home. One, it's your money. Two, it's your car. Three, it fits your needs. Four, he is a boyfriend, not a husband. Five, if he wants a car to fit him plus kids, he can buy one with his own money. Pretty much this. I don't understand people saying everyone sucks here because kids are involved. They have been dating for two years but only living together for three months. I would never just buy a whole freaking car just for a boyfriend. He wants a family-friendly vehicle or even a vehicle in general. He can buy his own. She's just letting him borrow it if he wants to use it, but she doesn't owe him anything, kids or not. Not stay home. It's your money and your car. If you wanted a car that fit him, he could buy one. Those aren't your kids. You're not responsible for their transportation. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for blowing up at my wife for giving my daughter a picture of my estranged mom for a family tree project? I was really close to my mom growing up, but she cut me off 12 years ago. She was kind of always a cold and awkward person, but she texted me that she didn't want to see me again. She hates my wife more than she loves me. And if she never has to see my wife again, it's worth not seeing me. It hurts like heck, and I had to go to grief counseling. One thing my mom had said was she mourned me like I died, and that I should let her go. I did the same, and I try not to think about her. But sometimes I think about the fact I have a whole family out there and just can't see them. It is a mind screw. Recently, my daughter had a school tree project. She knows the very basics that my mom is alive, but we don't talk. I figured we'd leave both of my parents off it. Dad walked out. Well, last night my daughter showed it to me, and it had my mom on it. Just seeing her was hard for me, and it was clearly a new picture. I kept it together in front of my daughter, but I asked my wife, and she said she got it off Instagram because she didn't want half of the poster to be empty. I lost it. And said she just hurt me so bad for a freaking poster. And how could she do that? She said I was overreacting. And that my mom still gave birth to me, so she should be there. I called her selfish and heartless. And slept in another room last night. She thinks I overreacted, but I think she crossed a huge boundary. Info. What does your mother hate your wife more than she loves you? There's a whole backstory here that's missing. And why can't you see any of the rest of his family? They took her side. Sister has cut me off while aunt financially blackmails her kids into not seeing me. Answer the question. There may not be a real reason. My dad's mom hated my mother simply for existing. My grandpa's mom hated my grandma because she basically hated everyone. And a woman across the street brags about how she doesn't see two of her sons because she never liked their wives. Some women are just kind of horrible to the sons' significant others. There doesn't have to be a reason. No a-holes here. The real a-hole is the teacher who assigned a project like this. Complete disregard for children's situations such as broken homes, foster care, etc. I suspect to have them present and explain to the class. This project should honestly not exist. It is literally no teacher's business what your home looks like. I can understand your wife wanting your daughter to feel like she does have a family and wanting her to know what her grandmother looks like. I can also understand you wanting your wife to respect the boundaries. She should have spoken to you first about it. And you should have acknowledged that at some point, your kid is going to want to know more. 
and hiding family members from her isn't helpful. Added to that because people are pressed. My dad taught elementary school for several years. Literally decades later, he's still haunted by some of the familial situations that some of those kids were in. While it sounds great to teach students that family models look different, it should never be done at the expense of a child. You are opening up a can of worms and a barrage of questions that other students now feel entitled to asking when you have someone explain that family member isn't in their life. What if that parent was an abuser to the child? What if the child's home life was bad enough to where they were removed? What does your child need to know what happened to Opie's kid's grandma? As someone who is in the exact same family situation, my mother-in-law's cut off because she didn't want a relationship with my husband if it included me. I would say not stay home. However, as I'm sure you know, it's almost impossible to understand the dynamics of a situation like this unless you've been through it. So you're going to get a lot of YTAs on this post. Since your wife was there for all of this struggle, I'm really surprised that she chose to include your mother's photo. It took my husband and I years of individual and couples counseling to come to peace with our situation. You and your wife might consider a couple of maintenance marriage counseling sessions to work through this. Also, 100% agree with the previous poster that projects like this are awful. So many kids don't have the picture-perfect family, and so many include trauma that this is not worth it. There are better ways to teach kids what it means to be a second cousin once removed. Yes, I always hated these projects in school, since I didn't know my dad, and my mom knew next to nothing about him, so they would always be completely empty in one half. A teacher actually argued with me one time that I had a dad after I told her I didn't. These projects just make anyone without a picture-perfect family feel super awkward and awful. And I love the family I do have and wouldn't change my bringing for anything. But those projects still suck.